future. The competition in this industry is so fierce, but we did manage to get a glimpse into the future. We are gaining opinions. The obvious question is, of course, how long will this smashing success last for video games? The last line of the next in major gaming news. The GameZilla Podcast. Look, that comes one of them now. Welcome to the GameZilla Podcast, your last line of defense in major gaming news. I'm your host, Grimlock, and with me in the GameZilla Media remote studios, that's right, we have multiple studios now, is my producers, the Dead Eye Knight, and Player One Miggy. What up, what up, what up? Personally concerned for my well-being after Miggy started bringing up there being haunting-type entities potentially behind me while I was having internet problems. Now I'm alerted. Now, <laughs> there is something creepy over your left shoulder. I don't, I don't like this. No, not, what, it, what is behind you? Oh, that's Mickey. That's a balloon of Mickey Mouse. Okay, it was oh, freaking me out. It was freaking me like out. So you guys, you guys know it's my uh, it's my night home alone, and now yeah. I'm not gonna sleep. I'm gonna have yeah. a night terror. I'm there is a silhouette in that house reaching for that Mickey Mouse balloon, though. I don't like this. You gotta stop saying it's things okay. like that. It's, it's not okay. funny to me. It's just this is abuse. To episode just the three eighteen <laughs> of the X Files. I mean, James <laughs> You know, I have a childlike <laughs> imagination. <laughs> Everything is scary in the dark. Man, you know not everything. Be, not everything. You know what would be hilarious? We, we really are off track right now. But what would what, what, what have been amazing if Miggy would have done this? That I would have never forgave him. But if he, but if he would have played the X Files theme song instead of the GPM theme song, and we had it recorded that way, and then we sent it to you. It's all dark and scary in my house. I hit play and it happens in my headphones. And I'd be traumatized and I would never forgive you. I would never forgive you. Let's remember, I have a grudge against Dr. Pepper from over a decade ago about not getting a free pop because an album came out. You would be dead to me, Miggy. Dead. Is that a, pro is that a promise? Cause I'll queue it up now. It's not a promise you want. <laughs> well, we know how to end it. If we ever want Dead Eye out of, out of the picture, we know how to end it real quick. Episode 318 of the GameZilla podcast brought to you by our patrons. Patrons. We're going to need an increase in patronage to pay for the therapy that I'm going to need <laughs> to overcome my childhood trauma and fear of the X-Files theme. Uh, we're going to need it. Just plain and simple. These, these two are bringing up traumatic childhood experiences and I'm not man enough to overcome them at this time. So we need your financial support. Go to patreon.com slash games, media and financially contribute to the life success and growth of the games, the podcast and games, the media. If you like what we do, of course, there's other great shows available on the GameZilla Media Network, and every one of them contributes a bonus show exclusive to patreon.com slash GameZilla Media every single month. And, uh, you know, we just recorded our Patreon show of the month. Month It is must or bust. We're Grim, Miggy, and myself let you know which games are must, which ones are bust, and we help you know the right way to spend your money. So... Hey, become a patron. Starts at just $1 per month. There's some cool perks there, but the real sweet spot is that $5 per month. And, uh, you know, we'll work on that uh, that special $10 tier where you can pay for my therapy. Thank you. <laughs> All right, yes. Thank you to our patrons. And remember, uh, if you want to catch the, the video side of this you, and you weren't able to watch the, uh, the live stream or you missed part of it, you can catch the entire live stream on YouTube. Just search Games Low Media and you can find all the episodes there. So, all right. Dead Eye, let's get into the news. I don't want to. I want to go get a baseball bat and a knife to make sure I'm safe from any demons. Miggy, I'm going to give you the option now. Let's get into the news. I think he's muted. I think he's muted. News, news, the new, 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 new news there. Oh, I want to try. I want Miggy to try it. No, I don't want Miggy to try it. <laughs> you know what I wanted Miggy to do. <laughs> there it is. There it is. News, there it is. news, Our news, 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 news. Our new news, news intro. <laughs> Anyways, let's get into the news, guys. <laughs> At minimum, you guys are going to have to pay for new pants for me. <laughs> don't, it's, just it. a, it's just a cuckoo. You don't worry about it. Worth it. Okay, so topic number one, Naughty Dog is responding to the abuse and harassment of those who worked on The Last of Us 2. If you've not seen it, was, uh, 
if you have not seen what has been happening um, f- to some of the uh, people that uh, worked on this game, it's uh, it's pretty bad. But I wanted to focus on one, which is uh, Laura Bailey, uh, who did the the mocap and voice acting uh, for a- was it is Abby, right? Is that the character? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, there's no spoilers in this. In we're not doing any spoilers for The Last of Us Part Two. I just oh, want to cover God. that right now. Oh, thank God. Okay, we're not going to be talking about what happened in the game, but but we are going to be talking about what's happening to this person. So if you're still worried, I'd give it like a 10 minute, like 10 minute, 15 minute push to, you know, in, into the podcast here. But like I said, we're not talking anything about story because I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know the story because I'm not playing the game and I didn't look it up. So, but what I, what I had a problem with is people that really have no common sense no idea of what they're doing to somebody that had no control over anything and that's that's what's going on here so uh laura bailey who i said did the voice acting did the mocap work for abby is uh did, posted a tweet a few days ago july 3rd to be exact um and basically says man i tried to only post positive stuff on here but sometimes this just gets a little overwhelming um blacked out some of the words because you know spoilers so even with through all this hate, they're blocking spoilers for you. And, uh, you know, there was a side note that said, thank you to all the people sending me positive messages to balance it out. It means a lot. Now, Abby is a character that uh, people don't like. Let's just put it that way. I'm not, I can't, I'm not going to get into the reasons why. People do not like this character. So, instead of voicing it to Naughty Dog, which maybe they're doing at the same time, they went after the voice actress. And mocab person basically saying, I'm going to kill you because of what you did in the game. Uh, I'm going to find where you live and slaughter you. Mark my fucking words. Next one. I will stab you. The following one. This one. This one. I hope your parents die by a hard cancer. Oh, my. Uh, this one just says, I will find you and I will kill you. Sorry, I will find you and I will kill your kid. Yep, yep. Um, this one, this one's really, uh, really just written well. Fuck you, dumb Abby bitch. Go fuck yourself. Such English. Those are just a few <laughs> of, of many that we could read. This person this is nothing in compa- Oh, go ahead. This is nothing <laughs> in comparison to what I'm going to do to Miggy if he keeps yeah. acting up. Yeah, that's fine. That's, that's fine. <laughs> Look behind you. Oh, I missed one. I uh, just want to say you should die, bitch. Fuck Man. it. Yeah. This is a person that did the voice acting <laughs> and the mocap work. They didn't create the character. They didn't write the script. They didn't make any of these decisions. You are attacking the wrong person. Oh, by the way, you shouldn't attack anyone. It's a video game that artists decided what they wanted to make, and you either like it or you don't, and you move on with your life. What? is wrong with keyboard warriors today in this pc world where they go no one knows who i am because my name's big titty mcgee 69 and i I just don't use my handle man i'm sorry i just knew that you were in there man you were you're part of the problem but what i'm saying is like like you know what i'm gonna i'm 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 taking a step back i'm putting my own foot in my mouth when when i was i was complaining about what facebook does where facebook pretty much it's it's more difficult for you to go watch a streamer on facebook and not have your real name not have your real name shoot across right and that's why people hate facebook gaming that's one reason why people just don't like it they don't want their real name out there because they can't be a keyboard warrior if people know who they are and so (laughs) when i'm at this point now where i'm watching people do just horrible things like this and think it's okay. Think it's fine because then nobody knows who they are because they're they're hidden behind some fake, you know, game tag and nickname, whatever you want to call it. And so this one just got under my skin when I read I'm like, "Wait, who are they attacking? Is this like someone that works at Naughty Dog?" 
No, it's literally the lady that just that gave her voice to a character. What is wrong with people? How where do you think that that like how dumb are you? How dumb are you? Anyways, you guys, Mickey, do you have something? Go for it. Oh, no, I was just going to say this story reminds me that I have to go back to our local grocery store and bash in um, the bag boy's head for the quality of food that I got from the deli. I, I, I have to do that. <laughs> and then after that, yeah. I have to yeah. go to Target for, um, you know, because and, 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 and yell at the manager because the popcorn I got from the food court was 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 too salty was too salty I, I need to i need to handle these right now i need to handle these right now it's it's tantamount yeah, that's mean, what it's I, tantamount to i'm gonna burn down you know multiple buildings because you know <sighs> i bought a game from from worst purchase and all i'm saying is like the game's not good so that's that's the worst purchase's fault like that's how bad this that's how stupid this is like I'm going to go into a, to a Home Depot and I'm going to yell at the guy that, you know, shook my paint because when I got home, the paint was actually defective from the factory of the manufacturer of the paint. But I'm going to yell at the guy at Home Depot because it's going to get me somewhere. Like, that's the, that's where I just, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. You're attacking the wrong person. And 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 the bottom line is you, sh- you don't need to attack anyone because the game doesn't fit into your perfect reality of what a game should be it's it's actually like someone screaming at a ronald mcdonald statue because they don't like the shape that chicken nuggets are (laughs) those shapes doesn't make any sense (laughs) i just to me to me i read this one and and i'm like I'm mad. I'm like mad that these how stupid these people are. And I and these people that are literally like, I'm going to find where you live and slaughter you. Mark my words. They should be held accountable for that threat. It's a threat. That is a threat. I don't care if it's on the computer, if it's in person, if it's written, if it's over the phone, you just threaten me because I voice act a character in a video game. Like what is wrong with people? I mean, here's the thing: if you don't, if and and, and I know, and, and I know, uh, Grim, you don't uh, take this stance uh, all all the time. But the thing is, if you don't like it, don't buy it. You know, speak with your wallet. I mean, now after the game, after people have beaten the game, or people couldn't finish playing through the game, there was there's tons of them online. People are are, sell, are selling them online. So go buy a used copy. Don't give the company your full your full. If you must check it out. But at the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal. It's a big video game. There's a bunch of other things to, that we got to worry about. There's a whole Black Lives Matter movement. There's Corona. There's other there's other things going on that uh, we, we should be upset about. But a video game and to harass somebody that's just doing the job over it? Get out of here. It's not even a job. It's, it's not even like, okay, listen, I still would argue that they're all way out of line if they were attacking the person that actually wrote the script of the game, mm. right? Whoever was the person that, that approved this to be the story and they were upset and they attacked that person. At least there was, at least at that point, there'd be some connection. There'd actually be a connection of like, this is the person that angered me because of their decisions. Now I'm going to be way out of line and I'm going to say words I shouldn't say. And that's still the statement, right? Mm-hmm. But this is like removed by like 20 layers of like some actor that just voiced a character that had no say in any None. decision None. that that story was already written, already approved, already done. And they were handed a script and said, these are your lines. If you don't want to read them, we'll find someone else to read them. That is literally the, the person you're attacking right here. You all owe this person an apology and you all need to look at yourself in the mirror and say, what the hell is wrong with me? Mm-hmm. I think after the show, I'm going to go down to the library and punch a librarian in the face. Cause I didn't like the last book I checked out. Exactly. It's <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Like the examples we could give of the stupidity of this is, is endless. And and the sad part is that a lot of the ones that we could give are like experiences that we've had in retail. Right? I think we all can sit there and say, Hey, we've worked in retail for years and we can sit back and be like, I got yelled at, screamed at, threatened with a gun in a holster once. 
because of something Apple did. And I didn't work for Apple. It wasn't the... I didn't do anything. <laughs> I didn't even help the guy originally. I was just at the counter and was trying to be nice. That's people. They're, people are fucking crazy, man. So anyways, the last point of this that I want to make is that Naughty Dog did uh, did step up and address this and basically was saying, uh, although we welcome critical discussion, we condemn any form of harassment or threats d- directed towards our team and cast. Their safety is our top priority, but we must all work together to root out this type of behavior and maintain a constructive and compassionate discourse. So, you know, I, I obviously I 1000% agree with that statement. Neil, uh, Neil Druckmann, who is your director of, uh, of uh, The Last of Us Part 2, uh, as the people that propagate this kind of hate would say, how stunning and brave. I hope these gamers get the mental help they so clearly need. Unfortunately, this is now the cost of making popular entertainment that challenges conventions. Laura doesn't deserve any of this. So there's tons of support, obviously, coming out. We're, we're focusing on the negative, but there, there is a lot of support for Laura, for, you know, for the, the company, for the director, for, for everybody that's involved. But, I mean, it's a fucking video game. And I don't care. Like, if if Metroid Prime 4 dropped tomorrow, surprisingly, would I be excited and, and, and probably poop my pants and then run out with the poop in my pants to a store and buy the game? Yes. And then if I put the game in and it turned out to be Barbie's Wild Horse Adventure Part 2, would I be upset? Yes. But would I go threaten somebody's life? Like, maybe. No, I'm just kidding. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Like, it's an, when I read these comments, I instantly go, what is wrong? Like, what is actually wrong with people? Like, how, how can you type that, hit send, and leave it out on the internet for people to see and believe in your mind that it's okay? Because I'm hiding behind the keyboard and nobody's ever going to find out who I am and I don't care about your little feelings. That, does that sum it up? I, I mean, how many times have we had this story that someone killed themselves because <sighs> of virtual bullying? Right. I don't care how old you are. I don't care your profession. I don't, you know, like kids are not kids. Virtual bullying is real. Virtual bullying has real consequences. And people that drive someone to harm themselves or are or even just fear for their, their safety deserve to be held accountable to the full extent possible. And if there's not laws in place because it's a gray area, then wake up world, not just America, but the entire world. You need to wake up because this is our world. We're a digital world now. Okay, the internet is a real fucking thing and it has been for a long fucking time. We need to wake up and we need to protect people because this is stupid. This person can't even enjoy the work that they did on a game that is the fastest selling PS4 exclusive of all time. In the first week that it came out. You are part of this person's part of something that we won't see for another decade, possibly. And they have to be worried about their life instead of being able to, you know, enjoy their accomplishment. It's wrong, man. I hate seeing this stuff. Mm -hmm. We just we just had a streamer commit suicide because of people online pushing him. It's just this type of stuff is not okay. And and these articles come out and then we just sit here like, are you telling me that nothing can be done about this? Yeah, where, where's where's Twitter? Where's Twitter banning all these people? Twitter wants to always talk about ha- harassing behavior and and hate speech and things like that. All these accounts should be banned. We should look into that and find out if any of these accounts are banned because those are actual threats they're making on someone's lives. That's not even just like mild harassment. There's no way any of this could be taken as a joke. This their life, extreme. their kids' life, their family's life. Like, yeah, it's bad. I, I am, I hate this, you know, like this is, I hope we, we hear an update about this. I hope, you know, and like I said, moving forward, we have to be better, much better. 
our governments have to step in and figure out how to regulate something. You know, these companies, I'm going to be honest with you, the companies need to be held accountable if they're not going to do anything. Okay. Like, like dead, I just said, ban all these accounts, IP block, all these accounts, make it hard for this person to make a new Twitter account. Don't just ban the account. IP block that, that IP, make them have to call their internet provider and get new IP addresses before they can even use Twitter again on whatever connection they're on. Or release their IP address with information on how to track these people and chemically neuter them so they can't <laughs> ha they can't breed because they're subhuman garbage like a lot of people on the internet, but specifically these people chemically neuter them so the next generation will be better. Yeah, yeah, I, but it's bad, and and there needs to be there needs to be multiple levels of protection for anybody that wants to use these outlets. Right now, it's too wild, wild west. It's just too shoot from the hip and. And because of it, we've we've lost people, uh, you know, and and I just I'm sick of seeing it. I'm sick of it. It needs to change. And this one this one was just another example on a very high level that I just. That it blew my mind because it was completely misdirect, like it was hate. And I don't I don't want to see hate, but it was misdirected hate on like. The biggest way, so. All right. That's topic number one, if you want to keep talking about this. Um, join the discord, talk, talk with us, uh, in the games, Little media discord, we can, uh, we can cover this in the general, ch general gaming chat and, um, you know, keep, keep the conversations going. We also have the games, little podcast chat, uh, to talk as well. So topic number two, or were you, were you signaling me there? No, I'm just okay. having fun with the camera. Got it. Got it. All right. Topic number two, our first sign that next gen games might take a price hike it has finally happened we were wondering when this would happen it has been a long time where we've been very comfortable living in that 59.99 price point uh, retail price point suggested retail price point so nba 2k1 uh or 2k sorry 2k21 came uh was announced and on the ps5 and the xbox series x there is no free upgrade like we've been hearing on a lot of other games. Instead, if you buy this game, you're going to be spending $69.99 on the PS5 and Xbox Series X edition. So um, this game will be uh, on, on September 4th. Players can pick up NBA 2K21 on Google Stadia, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, Windows PC, and Xbox One for $59.99. Later in the year, a new version of NBA 2K21 will be released on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X as a launch title, but 2K Sports will not offer a free next-gen upgrade like many other publishers of cross-generation games. Instead, the company will sell the next-gen version separately for $69.99, $10 more than the standard video game price that has been in effect for the past 15 years uh, over two full console generations. So rather than using Microsoft's smart delivery system, which we've talked about, um, or whatever Sony solution ends up being, 2K is going on its own way. Those who want to purchase the uh, PS4, Xbox One version and keep playing on the PS5, Xbox series will need to buy the what they're calling the NBA 2K21 Mamba Forever Edition for $99.99. You can buy that in September and if you do, September 4th, and if you do, the package will include what's called dual access to both the current and next-gen versions, allowing players to upgrade within the PlayStation and Xbox families, uh, in addition to a lot of other in-game goodies. Uh, this is also obviously a uh, intended to be a tribute to the memory of Kobe Bryant. And... Um, there will be two versions of this. You'll be able to get a... Um, a Kobe, there's there's a Kobe like 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 uh, beginning of his career, and then there's a Kobe basically um, edition that is him walking off the court, you know, for the last time type deal. Um, but yeah, that those are the special editions. If you buy that one again, that hundred dollar edition, then you get access to the upgrade when the next gen comes out. Otherwise, you're stuck buying two copies of this game. So. There's a there's a there's a statement here by 2K uh, game spokesman 
And we will uh, I want to read that and then we'll get into our thoughts on this, because there's a couple there's a couple things I want to talk about here. I want to talk about like the overall idea that games might be seventy dollars this gen. OK, that might not be as a big deal. That might not be something that upsets us. That might just be something that, hey, we've been we've had a good deal for quite a while. But. I also want to talk about 2K's decision here, because this is the statement that I'm going to read and we can get into this. We believe our suggested retail price for NBA 2K21 on next generation platform fairly represents the value of what's being offered, power, speed, and technology. That is only possible on the new hardware. While we are confident that NBA 2K21 will be a monumental leap forward for the franchise and a standout visual showcase on next generation consoles, we recognize that it's our responsibility to prove this value to our fans and NBA 2K players. We're looking forward to doing so and can't wait to show more in the upcoming months to launch. Okay. 2K, um, and then basically asked if all 2K games next-gen titles will be $70. The 2K representative said only that 2K's, the only thing they said was 2K's suggested retail prices for its games aren't meant to represent the value being offered. It's worth noting that the publisher is pitching the next-gen iteration of NBA 2K1 as a separate product from the current-gen version. Um with extensive improvements upon its best-in-class graphics and gameplay, competitive and community online features, and deep, varied game modes. So, to give you an example, this is similar to how 2K Sports handled NBA 2K14, where the PS4 Xbox One launch title was a different, uh, a, a very different experience from the PS3 Xbox 360 title. Okay, so... First question, let's just focus on 2K because we all know Dead Eye really likes 2K and believes in everything they do. <laughs> is this the right move when your game's coming out in September and and and, and there's possible rumors that the new console a, a new console maybe both could be hitting in October? Po you know, and if not October, then then 60 days we be pushing to November and don't do we really think that people are going to latch on to this and pay sixty dollars for a game and then pay another seventy dollars? Or do we just see a lot of this ninety nine ninety nine uh version bought up so people are ready for it? What do you guys think? There's a lot of people that like two K is their game. We know that this is a franchise that has a very loyal fan base, despite the fact that the economy of purchasing a sports video game is the same as flushing money down the toilet. They lose value quicker than any other titles on the market. It seems crazy to me when EA has already come out and said, hey, you buy Madden 2021, smart deploy. You're going to go ahead and enjoy this in the best way possible when you, when you make the commitment to upgrading your system. 2K not following suit isn't surprising because they're greedy horrible people at 2k and they'll they'll sell you garbage for full price and not ever apologize for selling you complete unplayable piles of trash i'm not saying that's what the 2k basketball games are we know i've had a, my issues with their wrestling games in the past but the now, the moral compass of this of this company is non-existent so of course right. they're gonna do this they're gonna try and milk you for as much money as they can now they now you mentioned Madden, but you but you did leave out the fact that they not only Madden did EA uh, acknowledge, they also acknowledged FIFA, the, like one of the biggest gaming franchises in the world. Eclipses yeah. Yeah. most things on global sales. We don't play FIFA like that here in the U.S., right. but, but around sales. the world, FIFA is one of the biggest titles to release every single year. And EA, a company that everyone puts on the same level of 2K when it comes to greediness, has already come out and made statements. That, you know, that's going to be something that's fan forward, that's encouraging for people to upgrade, that supports the industry, that supports the hardware, and that's good for the players. Not 2K, though. They're like, yeah, you got to shell out for $100 editions if you want to play in September, and then you want to upgrade a month later. Screw that. Well, they, so and so I have I have a couple points on this, too, is that, first of all, you. Um, you're you're you do have a very passionate community around 2k uh 2k 20 well 2k basketball right 
you have a community right now that's pretty actually upset with your game because the last the last generation of this game was not very uh, it was buggy it had a lot of problems and people were upset so i mean when you go read like some of the comments about this article i'm reading right now from polygon is people saying f you fix your games before i go and and not only buy another one of your games but have to buy two of your new game two of your games within a 60 60 day window if i decide to upgrade to the next gen on top of that you are fragmenting your community because from the sounds of it i don't believe that the that the first version that comes out in september is going to be compatible to play against people on the next gen where madden and fifa on ea will be because it is the same game with just enhancements. So you are fragmenting where it's like, well, if you don't upgrade, then you can still get the game, which is nice. Okay. I'm glad you're doing that. But if you do upgrade, then all the people left behind can't play with the new people and the new people can't play with that, with that, you know, infra that infrastructure of let's just look at, let's just look at PlayStation, for example, of 120 million PS4s. You don't have access to that, to that competition anymore. You know, if if it's really that much better and that different and that's why you have to buy it and all these things, then these games be are these games going to work across these these two generations like so many other games have already come out and said they will. Now, Grim, we've seen in the past with other titles that try to work a situation like this when we see a generation jump where this team is split and both games are filth. Yeah, absolutely underdeveloped right, for the new system and under quality tested for the old system that could very much happen and it's 2k so uh i'm not going to go on on some wild limb and say it could kind of happen i'm going out on a very sturdy limb and said it's a guarantee both games are probably gonna be buddy buggy yeah so i'll so say if anything if anything needs the uh needs the the gas um practice which is the games as a service uh practice um, I think sports games would be money for that release. So you release a, a free to download, um, you know, structure, and then you just update it every season. So like every, every season, every year, I mean, I could say maybe get at least what my matter of fact, how long has DC universe been online? I mean, you just pay for, you just pay for yeah, the, no uh, the roster. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, but I, I, I any, any game that you can pull out, you can pull, order, pull the Warcraft out for God's okay, sake. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. See you in a hey, hey, I'm 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 not that much of a nerd. I'm a comic guy. I'm a comic guy. Man. Okay, but anyway, Fine. I mean, but like, Fantasy I'm, Star Online too. Just got here after seven years. There you go. DC still, Universe still has been online for. <laughs> yeah, still viable. No, you, yeah. yeah, games of service for sure. But you get my you get my point. I mean, you just have the base game here, either either free or for a nominal for a, a small fee, and then every year you just push out updates where you get the roster updates and everything. And that way we're not flooding landfills with, uh, you know, with um, last year's sports title. That's just what they need to do. Yeah, I mean, the possibility of what you could do with, if you th like for me, I would think of like a FIFA, right? Like it, it, um, I'm a soccer fan. The things you could do with a game as a service and having it all live on on servers and letting you know and just and just up updating and, and evolving the game and then every so often every so many years a new game comes out let's look at let's look at overwatch's you know like roadmap right now like there is an overwatch 2 coming out but we've lived with overwatch and it's evolved over how many years right and so that that's that example of the, if you're still building on the same engine and you're and there's nothing really majorly changing about your development then do you really need to worry about issuing out a new game or could you just literally just drop season passes and then you could even in, get into that fact that during during like uh the year you could be like a call of duty or something and you could have some sort of pass that drops every three months that could unlock things i don't you know I, and i don't i don't have an example for you maybe it's like hey when you're playing free play, you can have collect all these different types of uh, soccer balls or basketballs or whatever, and you can change the goals uh, and, and like make it make it more like arcadey in a way when it comes to free play. That maybe you don't have access to all that crap if you're playing like competitive or whatever, but still, you could find a way to generate revenue based off of seasonal passes and and I'm gonna call them battle passes right now, but you know. Um, 
that so many companies have already proven to be a very good business model. You could you could unlock legendary players. You could unlock classic uh, classic jerseys. You could uh, you know concept jerseys. You could sell a story mode or a career mode as a separate. You know, like, hey, you want to play base game? You want to play, you know, against your friends? You hear the stock rosters and, uh, you know, oh, you want a career mode? You want to create a player mode? You want that? Yeah, you can go ahead and segment that out. $20 here, $15 there for the packages for the people that want to play it. But there's a lot of opportunity to change the business model of a sports video game to something like a Fortnite. Yeah, I mean, if you thought- like Call of Duty. That's FIFA how they makes, did it, right? Yeah, FIFA makes their. I mean, most of these, a lot of these games now make their money and make their big money, in my opinion, off of their ultimate team modes, right? Where you buy the packs of cards and you mm-hmm. and you keep buying the packs of cards and you get and you get and it's just like it's addicting, it's fun loot to collect, it's fun to play. and yeah, it's a form of a loot box. And Sorry, it's surprise been very, mechanics. It's been very successful for uh, these companies, but um, um, Kairagami. Um, said something in in the chat here at right? Gamesilla Media Twitch.tv slash Gamesilla Media says the only one I've played that's similar is Destiny Destiny Two, and I would say more so Destiny Two, uh, in its current form right now is yeah you can go pick that game up pretty much anywhere you want to play it on your on your virtual boy you just go and you know download it but but what I mean is like you go play it on PC Xbox PC um, PS4 wherever and you get the core game. Yes, you could buy DLC, and there are season and there's seasons. They've integrated basically what I'm talking about is what Destiny Two is really trying to do right now, as it as it draws people back. And they have found very interesting ways to for Bungie, after leaving Activision, to resurrect a game that I'm going to be honest with you was pretty much dead in the ground. I mean, that game was it was in bad shape. And they have like as as negative as I've been to Destiny Two, they have me where I had literally updated it the other night because I'm like I kind of want to go check this out. There's a lot like this is a different game. It's getting to that point where when you played Diablo Three when it first came out versus what Diablo Three is now, it's a different game. That's 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 what this is starting to look like on Destiny side, and this that business model should be copied by many companies, and it could be copied here in the sports realm is what we're getting at. <clears throat> now for the second piece before we move on unless you have did you have something else you wanted to say that i no i think your next part's gonna get yep. into what i want to talk about yeah the next part is just simple um we're, we could be looking at this being a sign of things to come with future games being um ten dollars more expensive right we're, we could be looking at that 70 dollar video game uh instead of the 60 dollar video game um and you know it could just be the new price hike that that we've avoided for 15 plus years what are what's your thoughts on that me my opinion right now i was i didn't like it at first and i got a little like you know unnecessarily like butthurt about it but then but then i'm like you know what it's first of all it's 10 bucks and second of all the games i buy i i want to buy them because i want to support these people it's 10 bucks is 10 bucks i'm on board I do so rarely buy a $60 game. It's almost exclusively Nintendo games because I know they'll never go on sale. So a lot of times I am waiting it out and riding it out to catch a deal, $40, $50 on a game. You know, that, that's more the price pay, point that I pay for games. What the next generation $70 game will do f- to me is push me to Game Pass. Push maybe if, if, if Sony does not offer a comparable service, it almost seals the deal that I'm switching to Xbox because I look at the affordability of getting something like game pass and going, you know what, you know, even at full price, it's like 15 bucks a month, you know, a little, it's a little more expensive than like my Netflix or whatever, but then I can play all these games every time a new Xbox, you know, first party title comes out that I know Grimm's playing. I know Miggy's playing. Well, guess what? Now I'm not thinking, do I need to play $60 to try this game with my friends? I'm just going to play it and enjoy it for as long as I want. And like that to me makes more sense. A $70 title, you know, just like, just like even a $60 title is now at this point, it's an investment. You have to be confident that you're buying a good product to make it worth spending the money. And I know that your guys shopping habits have changed for that way as well because of game pass. 
Yeah. So a seventy dollar title is going to make that even more true. That I'm only going to buy a game that I'm passionate about and confident in supporting at a seventy dollar price tag. With a service like Game Pass or whatever Sony could come out with, I'd rather just you know play the qu- very high quality games and large library of games that are being offered as a service. I think yeah, and I think the other point to make here is like I said, I said it wouldn't bother me, I, but I'm I'm bored with you. I would only buy the games I'm very passionate about. You know, I, I would I would buy the Horizon Forbidden West or whatever, right? It, unless Sony did have a option where I could have a service and get it day one, like I do with Halo Infinite. Maybe Halo Infinite is going to be 70 bucks. I have to worry. I'm going to have it day one on Xbox Game Pass. So the the, the second point of this, though, is that this could drive people not only to Game Pass, but it could drive people to that business model that we just got done talking about where it's like, okay, well, I could go buy Godfall for 70 bucks and not know if I really want to buy this day one and spend all this money on it, or I could just go jump into Destiny 2 for free and then just buy the pieces of Destiny 2 that I end up wanting to buy and still enjoy the game. Because Bungie came out and said, well, there is no Destiny 3, at least not right now. We're just going to keep building Destiny 2 out. And so, like, now you're this is almost a new fragment, like a new fragmented world we're talking about here you have the ultra exp- well, i don't want to say ultra but the expensive triple a games versus the easy access games or free to play games or games as a service where i can get in for zero dollars and then if i want to drop 5 10 15 20 or even 70 dollars i'll have maybe 30 to 50 hours into a game and then can say, yes, it deserves my 70 bucks. Yes, it deserves my $25 for for the season pass or whatever, right? I don't have to jump in like you're saying and buy something full price and then be like, oh God, this is Brink 2. Yeah, and, and we live in a time now that's completely different than any other in the history of video games where the free-to-play gaming options are so plentiful and so good that you could buy a system and pay for your online and then never buy a video game and just throw money, you know, here and there at your Fortnite, at your Warzone, you know, whatever free to play game you're into. There's so many great options that, hey, you can use up a ton of time. And if you like gaming online, there's so many good ones you can play with other people. So you know, a- I, I, I do think the business model is going to have to change for AAA. Yeah. Here's a fun fact about my Xbox. What game, what's the last disc do you th- you think that went into my Xbox? Destiny 2? Nope, don't need it. Last disc. Did you buy Rage 2 on the Xbox? I, I, I did, but not, that's not it. So Battle think War. about, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Basically, what I'm getting at is <laughs> Jay for says State of Decay 2. No, <laughs> the last disc that, that I have bothered to put into my system, and I regret owning it because I would rather just have it digital at this point anyways, but it's still in, in the system, is Division 2. Oh, jeez. And it launched. Launch day of Division 2. <laughs> oh, because man. I literally have lived off of Game Pass since that to the point where I'm like, oh, I want to play Ark, go grab it on Game Pass. Oh, I want to go play, you know, whatever, grab it on Game Pass. Um, It's just, I don't think about the physical game anymore, even though I'm a collector. I I don't think about the, like Maneater, for example, right? A game I wanted to play, don't really care if I own it or not. I bought it digital, right? It wasn't Ori. Ori, I wanted a physical copy. Get it. Okay, cool. It's on the shelf. I still downloaded the Game Pass edition to play it. I didn't even use the disc. <laughs> so you're gonna charge me seventy dollars, you know, for these games and stuff, and you're gonna talk about about uh, you know these options, even if and, and seventy dollars doesn't mean it's physical. I mean, yeah, you can buy the seventy dollar version digital too. But the, the whole point I'm making is that when you look at things like that, it's just I live off of the service at this point. Something that we didn't think. I mean, we knew it was going to happen. We we do it with Netflix. We do it with with music. We do it with movies. We do it with music. We do it with TV. I mean, everything is turning into service, and and you're technically owning less and less. You're just streaming stuff. 
and gaming is trying to go that way but streaming is very hard for gaming because of the just the what the demand it needs of the bandwidth mm -hmm. so we're still in a we're still in a service mode though of hey i want access to this library i'm gonna pay you x amount of money per year so i can have access to the library and then that library changes and expands every month so yeah, I have a No Man's Sky disc, but I don't have to get it. I just go to the Game Pass and I download No Man's Sky. You know, and like it, it just to me, we are going to go into this next generation of gaming and we're going to see a more fragmented world than we're used to seeing in the sense that some people are going to go back to Destiny. Some people are going to go back to, are going to play those games, those Warframes, those types of games that are just like, oh, even, even Activision doing it right where I can go get Warzone without owning COD. Okay, so be like, oh, all right, I'm not going to pay $70 for a new COD. I'm just going to wait for their BR mode to come out, download it, and enjoy it. And then, you know, come, come Christmas time when they drop that game down to 30 bucks, that's when I'll pick up my copy of, of Call of Duty. And though people still do that now, it's, it's, you're, you're, you're making it even easier for them to make the decision. That's what it is. You're making it even easier for me to go, oh, wow, that's a lot versus free. Oh, that's a lot versus a little. And I'm just going to, uh, you know, I'm going to continue to gravitate towards the way that I have been. And I, again, I'm the collector here. So if I'm doing it, the casual gamer, it's even easier for them. It's yeah. way easier for them. It's way easier for that guy that used to trades every game in, buys the game, plays it, beats it, buys the game, plays it twice, trades it in, whatever the situation it's way easier for them to say, well, I don't have to do any of that bullshit anymore. Yeah, I'm about the, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no I was, was going to say, I'm about the, uh, the same. You said, like, I bought my Xbox specifically for Game Pass. And uh, let's see, I only own two physical games. I, I got Dragon Ball Z because I wanted it, got it physical for the collection. And mm -hmm. I've got Soul Calibur because it was cheaper to buy physical than to get it digitally other than that i'm living off of game pass matter of fact i haven't touched dragon ball z in a while and i've been living off of game pass um yeah that's i mean it's yeah digital future but my only um and my only concern is just you know the with the the whole monetization practices i mean even though the price is going to go up to like or hopefully not maybe it's just a ea thing but you know with the uh 70 dollars um what is that you know, what do you guys think about the continuation of like monetization of like battle pass success of DLC? You think that's still going to continue the way it is now, or you think they might back up just a, just a, a little bit off of, off of monetization? I mean, you're paying $10 more because the games, the, the thing we're hearing is games take longer to make. They cost more to make. They require the, you know, more workforce to make blah, blah, blah. Right. It's the same thing we hear about everything. But um, the situation of paying $10 more I, doesn't change the fact that the business model of battle passes and microtransactions are where they continue to generate money off of a game that maybe the sales have declined, but their player base hasn't declined. That's where they're still going to generate money. I mean, Call of Duty got $30 from me when I, when I bought it on sale at Christmas, okay? And normally... Normally, that would be all they get from me. Instead, <laughs> I have spent, I don't even want to actually look it up, but I can imagine I've spent maybe a maybe between $100 and $200 on that game wow. because of content that comes out, the battle passes, and everything else. Wow. It's probably closer to 100 bucks, but still, like, it's still money that I would have never put into a normal game like that. I would have, like, if I, like, example, I wouldn't go out and buy the $100 version of Call of Duty. I'd buy the $60 version that's on sale for $30. Like, that's what I would buy. But because they release cool skins and cool guns and, and, uh, and then they, <laughs> and then they come through with the, hey, buy this package and we give 100% of the proceeds, you know, to, um, to veterans, things like that. They do cool stuff. I keep, I keep, keep supporting their game at that point right because they keep giving me fresh content the game doesn't get stale as fast you know there might be a meta that comes out because the game changes where i'm like i'm gonna take a break but i could still come back and so that's what i don't think that goes away i think we see the price hike more than just 2k i think everybody's gonna start coming out and have a you know an increase in price 
we've we've lived the happy life of sixty dollar games for for over two generations. I know that article said fifteen years, but I mean, like it's been it's been stagnant um, increase in game in game price for a long, long time. Other than if you want a deluxe or ultimate edition of a game, and so I think we're going to see that ten dollar increase. And you know, I don't know. I don't know. Like, it doesn't seem like much. I know it'll add up when when you think of how many copies of a game is sold and, and all that. But it's uh, it'll be interesting. It'll also be weird that sale sales on games change, right? What mm-hmm. what we see as a value right now, when we see that half off or whatever, all of a sudden won't feel like half off to us at least out the gate. You know, when we see a seventy dollar game on sale for sixty bucks, we'll be like, wow, well, it's bad. it's normal price. Like it's so it it, it is going to be weird. But um, you know the the whole point of this is that I I do believe it, it creates more fragmentation. Jafer does bring up uh in in the chat on twitch.tv slash games on media does bring up uh, a good point about what about the internet options in the U.S. and will they continue to falter? So we've been we've been all locked in our house and quarantined and and we've seen you know viewership for content creators and streamers go up we've seen gameplay and 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 system sales and all that stuff just skyrocket and we, because of it we've seen complete failures within the xbox live playstation uh, P- all sorts of different servers that have just been overwhelmed with with not being able to handle all the traffic because the u.s infrastructure is just bad and if we're bad there are other places in the mm. world that are much worse and there are places in the world that are better, but um, it, it's still going to limit the market to what they're going to be able to do. It, it's hard like for me to go pull Call of Duty, a 200 gigabyte plus game down and install it. It's not a big deal. <laughs> but honestly, to the two people right next to me and in, in talking in this <laughs> chat, it is a big deal. I don't have to go outside of my own podcast to say that's a problem. You now you know me, you know me and my internet whenever we want to play. It's like, all right, I'm, I'm sending them an invite to the party. Oh, I gotta download this update. I'll I'll be back tomorrow to get that uh yeah, to accept exactly. That. <laughs> exactly. So Jafer makes a good point there is that that is going to still limit this concept, mm-hmm. but at the same time, if I can sit there and look at I can pay 15 bucks a month to have access to over a hundred to two hundred games. And all I have to do is have a little bit of patience or be a little bit of pro be proactive, knowing that I'm going to play a game and get that install started as soon as I can. Versus dropping $70 on one game. Now I have access to 200 games. So when my friends aren't playing that one game and they're playing the other game that I didn't buy because I didn't have the money to go buy two game full price games. Right. I go play Halo Infinite day one and then jump on over to Forza and then jump on over to Gears of War and then jump on over to whatever. I can do all that. So um, I still think we see that. I mean, it's already growing. It's already doing really well. We're going to see it do even better. And but then the question is, because these companies are asking for more money, does it become more difficult for Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo? Well, not Nintendo, but Xbox, PlayStation, PC, whoever that have these services to get access to the third party games that we've seen hit the game pass? Right or the PlayStation Now, we, we've seen some pretty like like I mean this is a horrible example, but we just saw Fallout seventy six hit Game Pass, right? Or it's about to, it's about to. Um, you know that that's a bad example because Fallout seventy six is a hot <laughs> dumpster fire, but it's a, it's a third party game by Bethesda. Bethesda starts selling their games for seventy bucks or whatever. Do we not? Do we start seeing Bethesda games that are much older hitting Game Pass and maybe not as not as new? Because they're going to try to milk that top t- that top price point before they allow it to get to some of these services. It's stuff like that that time will tell how it might affect these services um, as we move forward. Um, Chop Slender also chimes in and says, "I have no interest in buying the new Call of Duty, but I but I play Warzone with my friends because it's free." That's the that's the, Warzone with me. That's the example. That's he played. We're not friends. Yeah, no, he played with me though. It was great. He's 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 amazing at it. <sighs> Very good. We won every game we played. Um, but anyways, that's a, a direct like, a perfect example of you know someone that's into gaming, you know, and is looking for value. And I don't think a seventy dollar game is going to be that value. I don't care what it is. 
they could come out with his favorite game at 70 bucks. He may not bite on it right out the gate. Seventy dollars um, from Metroid Prime Federation Force Two. Yeah, and then the the other really good point that Jafer made in the chat that we've seen happen. The other issue that I see is publishers making their own game pass to bypass the royalties charged by Microsoft mm. or Sony. What have we seen with Netflix losing a bunch of them? Disney doing their own thing, CBS doing their own thing, right? Everyone started to branch off and try to do their own thing. HBO has their own now. By the time you're done signing up for all of them, you might as well have just bought cable and, and had access to everything, right? Right? It's gotten to that point. We all made, we all cut our, we all cut our uh, coax lines and, or whatever, so that we could, so that we could get rid of, get rid of our cable bill and pay 15 bucks a month and have access to enough content that we were satisfied. And now some of us are back up to paying close to what our cable bill was for all these different services. It's the same idea with loot boxes with, you know, we all, we all like saw loot crate kind of launch and we got excited about loot crate. And then all of a sudden it was, here's Marvel's crate. Here's star Wars crate. Here's your toothbrush crate. Here's your beard crate. Here's your, like all these different things. By the time you sign up for all of them, it's like you're spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars every month, you know? So that's that is a scary part where we do know EA has dabbled with it. We do know there are those companies out there that have dabbled with it. Humble Bundle has one, right? So I mean, um, could we see where Xbox and Sony aren't able to pull some a, a lot outside of their first party because of um, you know because of this? It's very possible. All right, we can keep that conversation going in the Discord, though. We got to move on. We got one last topic to uh, to discuss. And, um, you know, if, if you're not watching us live on twitch.tv slash Media and you can't click the link to Discord, then just head on over to gameslowmedia.com, the community tab, and join the Discord there. All right. Last topic is Microsoft announces the Xbox Series X games event. For July 23rd, Halo Infinite will be the big star of Microsoft's show. Can't wait. Thank, thank oh, God. One game they have is going to be the star of the show? I'm so surprised. Hey, you bite your tongue, heathen. Get out of here. <laughs> Microsoft will hold its Xbox series. They're, they're going to show you Halo and then eight shiny turds. Yeah, okay, Mr. I wish I had an Xbox. Right. Said it. Right. I'm they, just saying what you're going to see at the showcase. Microsoft they, will hold an haters. Xbox Series X game event on July 23rd at 9 p.m. Pacific time. Um, the nine, sorry, 9 a.m. Pacific time. The company is planning on showing games made by its Xbox game studios, including Halo Infinite. 343 Industries briefly teased Halo Infinite in a trailer a couple weeks ago, revealing that the banished uh, antagonists are returning for the next big installment in the Halo franchise. There will be more than just Halo, though. Microsoft has been steady, steadily acquiring game studios, and the company now has 15 Xbox game studios in total. Xbox fans are now hoping to see what those studios are working on for the Xbox Series X. Microsoft recently created a Fable placeholder uh, and a Twitter account, leading fans to wonder if the game might make a return during July's Xbox event. Microsoft also recently extended its Fable trademark to cover USB chargers, portable speakers, headphones, and more. AKA, it's coming back and they're going to have accessories with the game because you know people have been asking for this for years. Um, given Microsoft's released a Hellblade 2 teaser trailer during the Xbox Series X unveiling last year, it's reasonable to assume we'll see more from Ninja Theory about this upcoming title. Uh, Psychonauts 2 is still due in 2020 from Microsoft Double Fine Studios, and there's bound to be some hints at how Forza Gears of War will adapt to the more powerful hardware in this Xbox Series X. Rare also unveiled the new Everwild game in November, and we might get a closer look at what that, what that is during Microsoft's event. And like always, Xbox fans are still hoping for a surprise like Perfect Dark and Banjo-Kazooie games. Um, Microsoft has already promised that some of the company's Xbox Game Studios teams will reveal new gameplay games optimized for Xbox Series X and even brand new game announcements that we have not heard of yet. So... 
this is pretty cool. I'm excited. We knew it. We knew it was coming this month. We just, you know, at, at the time we didn't know for sure when uh, if it was going to be middle of the month, end of the month. It is more towards the tail end, and we're going to uh, we're going to get it on July 23rd. But obviously, we're going to see Halo. I want I want to see the next installment of Forza, be it Motorsports or Horizon, whatever or both. I don't care. Whatever, just show me something. What you're going to do with Forza now? Um, you know, I want to, I would love to see Fable, even if it's, even if it's a, a reboot, right? Fable one re- completely remastered, you know, um, I don't know, but bringing Fable back seems, seems like a strong, a strong thing. Um, Obsidian at this point will have, will have, uh, grounded out, uh, you know, um, Outer Worlds is, was, was great, but what, you know, what's next from Obsidian and, um, they seem right now to seem to be pretty much pretty on fire so i'd like to see what they're going to be doing but yeah i mean we need to see these games in with gameplay for the love of god give us next gen gameplay and not just a bunch of cgi video and you know what just drop the price of your system like just come be the first for somebody needs to finally man up and just say cool $4.99. Four ninety nine. I don't care. I don't care. This just thing might be it. out in three months. It might be out in like three months. We need to know how much, how yeah. many pop cans to save up to return here in Michigan. And the rumors are that before coronavirus, there were rumors that the Xbox Series X was going to launch in August. Because Xbox was being, I mean, we know Xbox was being aggressive. We know they came out swinging late last year. We, you, you could see that they were, they wanted to be first out the gate. And uh, so, you know, there's been articles talking about how the more powerful system was supposed to launch in August. And then this re- this rumored secondary system that is a cheaper, you know, a more affordable, less powerful streaming box, maybe uh, it was going to come out later, which everyone seems to think we might also hear about this this other system uh, at this show on July 23rd. But, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm ready. Show me Halo. Give me updates on on Gears of War. Give me a new Forza. I mean, you know, if and we know this is going to be focused on first party, so hit us with a few surprises that we didn't see. You know, I know Record didn't do well, but you know, could we see something like like that? Right? Could a could a sequel to Record? Could a you know some or a new IP like Record that was exciting and fresh hit uh, and show us? I'm really excited for Everwild. I loved the trailer that we saw Everwild. I loved the world creation. I loved the creatures and I want to know more about it. Give me that. And a lot of all of that will, will satisfy me because I'm already very on board on the Xbox platform. So, and then of course the rumors came, uh, some of the rumor mills started spinning today about Microsoft is interested in acquiring Warner brothers interactive. So your creators for, uh, you know, for the Arkham Knight series and and the uh, Shadows of Mordor series and things like that, um, you know, that could that could be a huge grab for uh, for Xbox uh, to, to be to build off of that and see see what um, what they could do with it. We don't need to explore that idea of it. But the fact is, we know Xbox has been buying studios to, to bring into their to their first party world. Every time they've talked, they've expanded. They're about to talk again. So could these rumors be way further along than we know? And could Warner Brothers be coming as soon as July 23rd? Be a big and what, hit. Yeah. And and would they be playing they'd be playing that game of cool, they're joining the team. Oh, and here's the new video game. Here's the new rumored Superman game that you guys have been, you know, talking about for the last four years. <laughs> So uh, playable day one on Game Pass at launch. I think everyone would be like, oh, like I'm not even a Superman fan. I'd be like, damn, that's that's a move. So it, uh, buying Warner Brothers uh, Interactive brings a lot of intellectual property that people like along with it. So uh, I think that only is going to help Microsoft expand their portfolio because it's great that they're buying all these studios that are up and coming studios that have made highly acclaimed, often independent or smaller budget games. But
but acquiring a Warner Brothers uh, gaming division brings with them a ton, a ton of fans that, again, casual fans that like, hey, I, I like playing video games about, you know, characters I know and stories I like already. That that could be a big seller for people to just choose Xbox over over PlayStation in the next generation. Especially if they come out and they do launch that second system. Um, we now know here's here's the deal. We now know that PlayStation 5 is going to be, even if it comes out at 500 bucks, the all digital version isn't going to be dirt cheap. We know they're both gonna have a decent price tag on them. So if Xbox could come out and say, here's our five hundred dollar model, and oh yeah, here's our two hundred and fifty dollar model or our three hundred dollar model, right? Could they could they like you're saying, could they set themselves up? kind of in the same way that Xbox 360 did at their launch, where it was just like, wow, PS3 is very expensive. Xbox 360 is value has value, and there's great games over there. You know, like a lot of, you know, there's a lot of games people love. And the Xbox 360 did well for most of that generation until Sony finally got some momentum rolling late in that generation. I'm, I'm kind of seeing a very similar pattern right here. And Xbox could come out, especially if their high end is can beat price point and then their low end is is just insane it could be big big news and then dropping things like a new acquisition of you know warner brothers and a fable relaunch and, or 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 whatever continuation whatever you want to call it you know along with you know ps5 is like yeah we got gran trismo coming they go boom here's the new forza and they drop a whole new engine on us and it just looks insane because forza has been dominating this the mark the racing market for years now so we don't know what playground and and turn 10 and all of them are working on right now but we already got to see a glimpse at gran trismo so now so now xbox gets to react and they can react with oh that's cute and just drop a bomb. It also could just be like, yeah, they both look about the same. It could, you know, it could be that way. But, you know, I have more faith in the Forza uh, franchise of recent years than I do the Gran Turismo. So um, we'll see. But I'm very excited. We got our date. I'm, I'm pumped. And I hope we already have an Xbox Series X pre-order page in it that exists. We, we already, but we can't pre-order yet. So like, could this be that big day where like, boom, here's a, here's a ton of information. Halo looks insane. It's the next game that we're going to go sink 500 hours into, you know, because it's a game as a service and I can't wait. And on top of that, here's, you know, 20 other games, half of them we never even knew were, were existed. And then here's the price point. Oh yeah. You could pre-order it tomorrow or, or tonight, you know, like, and 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 Microsoft could literally be off to the races, and Sony's still sitting there like, uh, 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 you know, and that's and that, that's what I was worried about is that we Sony has felt hesitant, and and I'm just waiting. They need to react, and depending on what happens here, they're gonna have to react quick. Or now they have a date, Sony beat them to the punch. They could do that too. Miggy, you got anything on this? Keep it short. Or I'm, I'm, I'm saying we're going to keep this one short, so I'm going to make sure you get to put your feet. <laughs> I'm like, oh. off, keep it short, Mickey. I'm like, uh, uh, no, actually, I've got nothing. I mean, you guys, you guys said, said it all. Yeah. I, um, I mean, what are you most excited? What are you hoping for the most? Like, if you could pick one thing, what is the most, the most exciting item that you're waiting for out of uh, Microsoft? Console. No, um, actually, I'm with Jafer. Um, fable. Give us a give us a fable. I don't care if it's a reboot, if it's a uh, uh, um a continuation. Just give us fable back and make it good. I would love to hear that Obsidian took over Fable. Oh my gosh, that's what I would like. If if you asked me, Obsidian now has the Fable franchise after what they did with Outer Worlds, after their track record that's going on right now. Give them Fable and tell them to run with it. That'd be big. And that'd be that'd be huge for me. So huge. what about I, you? Uh, I'm still I... saying that I want what I've been saying for the last few shows. I want to see that side by side footage of the identical game, one on a current generation Xbox system and one on the Series X and show me exactly performance wise what we're going to see. I, I'm very interested in that. I really want to know practically how 
I can understand the difference between the two more than just looking at specs on paper. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would love to see some of that. I know it's hard because it, it all comes down to what you're watching it on, you know? Mm-hmm. They'd be like, hey, here's, 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 here it is at 120 frames per second. If I'm watching it on a cell phone screen that's capable of, you know, 60 hertz refresh, I, I'm not really understanding what they're showing me. That's so it, right. it's the same problem they had with this generation. So, yes, I would like to see it. Um, but I do know the li- that there's a lot of limitations out there where people are like, well, it doesn't look that much better. It's like, right, but watch it on a 240 hertz screen and and realize what it's actually capable of doing. Right. So, I mean, just me playing. So I got my like real quick. I got my 240 hertz Alienware monitor. I could play Forza Horizon 4 on my Xbox One X and now I can play it on my PC. And I now understand oh my God, how much better it looks on the PC. Not just because of the, the refresh rate and all that stuff, but I, dev- I never understood. The game was beautiful on the Xbox One X. I went and played on the PC. I went back to the Xbox One X. And I was like, oh my God, this is, it's day and night. Day and night difference. So, you know, I only could see that once I invested in the technology that would let me see that. And, you know, that's, that's really tough for a company to sit there and be able to show that off. Unless you walk into a store, which is not easy to do right now. And they have two monitors up there. You know, one's 4k at 120 frames a second and one's, you know, 4k at 60 frames a second or whatever. And then you can see the difference, but we'll see what they come up with. We'll see what, what clever things they try to pull. So. All right, guys, that's our attack on the news for these topics and much more. Please visit GameZillaMedia.com. You can check out the blogs. You can check out the YouTube videos. You can uh, listen to all the other uh, podcasts we have on the network. And anything else that's going on at GameZilla Media, you're going to find it all at the website. But we want to thank our patrons one last time for this episode. Yeah, thank you so much to all of our patrons who support us. And if you are yet to become a patron, please consider doing so. Patreon.com slash GameZilla Media. And we will continue to st- bring you awesome podcasts all through this pandemic. So you're locked in your house. Don't worry. We're hanging out here with you. We'll be locked in here with you. All right. And uh, so we ran a little long today. We had our, our discussion topics were pretty much every news topic because they, they, there was a lot of opinion in these topics. So we didn't come up with we decided not to do a discussion topic today. So we're going to wrap it up. Uh, this has been episode 318 of the Games Little Podcast. We want to thank everybody for tuning in on twitch.tv slash Games Little Media. It's our second week back here on Twitch, and we're having a really, uh, really fun time here. Uh, shout out to everybody that's found us on Twitch. We uh, broke over 500 follows, and uh, we're really excited to keep growing our show here on this platform. Um, so yeah, you know, um, appreciate all that support. But we will, uh, we'll sign off from here and say thank you. We'll see you next week, and remember, we are your elite free DLC for all your gaming news. And until next time. Game on. Game on. Game on.